this morning, of course, has been mentioned a couple of times, we've come together to celebrate fathers. Amen. Anybody thankful for their father this morning? Amen. Anybody thankful that they are a father this morning? Anyone thankful for our heavenly father Amen. this morning? Amen. We're here to celebrate the dads. And you know, it's, it's difficult to come up here sometimes because the things that you want to share, God just doesn't lead you to share. Amen. God just doesn't put it on your heart to share certain things. For instance, I, you know, I, I feel like on Mother's Day, we celebrate mothers and we talk about how great mothers are and they are. Amen. And, and sometimes uh, for Father's Day, I, I can remember the first time I was asked to share on Father's Day a couple of years ago. Uh, uh, Brother John had asked me and I went to the Lord and I feel like dads you just get picked on on Father's Day amen I, I, I don't know what what it, what it is um, but this morning I hope actually that you're encouraged by what we're going to go over because we have seen so much change in our culture in regards to the family can you agree with that uh, families are being redefined almost daily supposed to look different than what we know to be right and true. And we can see the absence of the true family is becoming a detriment to our society. Can you agree with that? A, a cover article in the U.S. News and World Report concluded something very simple, and it sounds strange when you read it on the front cover, but it simply said this, Dad is destiny. Now, that's a strange title, but if you think about it, more than any other, a father's presence in the family will determine a child's success and happiness. Now, that's not me just trying to build up dads this morning. Uh, that's backed by research, both secular and Christian research. The article noted that nearly two out of every five children in America do not live with their fathers. And you can see, as we look upon our society and as we see things that happen, this, this culture that tries to redefine the family and try to tell you that the traditional roles of man and woman and, and husband and wife are no longer what they used to be, well, we can see the outcome of that line of thinking. Amen? One of the ways society has tried to redefine the family is by placing the role of the man as less and less important. Guys, for a lot of us, by the way, let's not pick on society. A lot of us don't put up much of a fight. Amen? We, we don't put a lot of pushback against it. Fathers, we have an important job. Grandfathers, we have an important job. Uncles, big brothers, big cousins, we have an important job. As a dad, God has blessed you with a role that should not be taken lightly or just in stride. But let me ask you a question. What, what does it really mean to be a dad? If I asked you to define this morning, if I were to say, Brother so-and-so, come up to the front. I'm going to give you a microphone. And I want you to define for me what it means to be a dad. In your mind, what is it that you would say? What, 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 would, you, what would your definition be? And I will say that, you know, we're going to get a wide variety of answers on what a dad really is and what a dad does. Um, we're going to get some confusion about the role of the father. And, and the reason why is quite simply because society has tried so much to change what the role of a man and a father is. And it's done through the media. It's done through pop culture, through movies and music and TV shows. It's done even in the course of casual conversations because society is being manipulated and swayed away from the Word of God. Can you agree with that this morning? Guys, we have a clear direction on fatherhood. This morning we're going to be reading in God's Word and looking at what God tells us about being a father and being a man. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to scroll or turn with me. We're going to be in the 128th Psalm this morning. So when you get to Psalm 128, verse 1, let me hear you say amen. And guys, by the way, if you need to, go ahead and break into that chocolate and pass some to your friends because 
I'm going to need you guys to get lively this morning. Amen? Set some, uh, no, please. Wait till next week so I can blame it on Curtis Linton. Psalm 128, verse 1. Are you there yet? Here's what God's word tells us. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house, thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion. And thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Verse 6. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children in peace upon Israel. Will you pray with me? Father, I'm thankful this morning that you have provided a way for me to be able to come to this house and worship with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, I am thankful for the many blessings you bestow upon me daily, Father, and this morning... I am especially thankful that you have chosen me and gifted me with the ability to be a father. Father God, I pray this morning that as we go through your word, that as men and as fathers, we are encouraged. And we take the clear direction that you have given us to be effective, godly men and fathers. I pray this morning... For anyone in here that's not a father, that by the reading of your word, God, I pray that you speak to them and you encourage them. And Father, that we can see what it really takes to have a happy and peaceful home. Father, no doubt we are hit from every side on what the traditional family is supposed to be and what it's not supposed to be. Father, please forgive us when we fall short. And please help us not sway away from your word and hold to the truths that are outlined in defining the family and the role of man and woman. Father, I thank you, I praise you, and I love you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray all these things. Say it with me, church. Amen. Guys, this morning, let us not be discouraged. Let us not feel beaten down. Instead, let us feel encouraged. Better yet, let us feel emboldened, motivated by what God has to say to us this morning. I believe that God has something special for you here today. Here's what God's Word tells us in Psalm 128 about being a godly man and father. And I I would like to cite Ed Wood because I'll I'll quote him several times during this message. The title of the message this morning is God's Outline for a Peaceful Home. God's Outline for a Peaceful Home. Let's go ahead and get started. We'll read Psalm 121 verse 1 once more. It says, blessed is everyone who? Everyone. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord that walketh in his ways. The first thing we need to do, fathers, men, even the ladies this morning, what what we need to do is to walk in the ways of the Lord. Now, here's the thing. Guys, we have to take God seriously. So often God is reserved for pockets of time within our week, Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights, maybe some times that we talk about Him uh, throughout the week. But understand this. We are never going to get anywhere if we do not take God seriously. As serious as when we get a paycheck every couple of weeks. As seriously as when a doctor hands us uh, some type of diagnosis in which we have to take actions in order for that illness to be remedied. Serious in the fact when you know that your child is hurt or sick. Serious as in the fact of maybe your, your wife saying, you know what? Something's wrong. God must be taken seriously all the time. This goes for men and women alike. We are called to do what? Fear the Lord. And and, and fear is one of those things that we automatically have this negative connotation for. You know what? There is such thing as healthy fear. 
Amen? Uh, I have a healthy fear when a tractor and trailer is flying at 55 miles per hour up Poindexter Road out front to not step in front of it. Why? Because even as large as I am, I'm going to be flat against the grill of that truck. Amen? I have a healthy fear of that. That word feareth in our text this morning comes from the Hebrew word yare, which means to show respect or profound reverence of someone with authority over you. Let me ask you a question this morning, Dad. Do you have a profound reverence for God? Not just right now, but tomorrow when you wake up and you might be running late. How about midweek when someone says something that just really irritates you? Do you take God as seriously in that moment? Do you have that profound reverence in that moment? Because this verse, we see that there is a clear connection between the behavior of the individual and the blessings they receive. Did you catch that? It wasn't you can just live anyway. Blessed is the man who just says that he fears me on Sunday morning and I will bless him always. No. Blessed is the one who walks in the way of the Lord. That means there is an expectation for you to live by. You cannot simply fear or have reverence for God from an intellectual perspective. Just the thought of having reverence. Rather, your conduct should match that of someone who has a healthy fear of God. Psalm 119 verse 1 says this, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. See, echoing the same exact sentiments. Your conduct, how you handle situations, how you conduct yourself, is directly tied to how God works in your life. There's people who say, you know what, I just don't understand why, why all these things keep happening to me. I don't understand why it is that, that God isn't speaking to me. I don't understand why it is that it seems like God... God's presence is absent from me. Well, the first thing I would ask that person is, are you within the will of God? How do you know if you're within the will of God? Are you active in your prayer life? Are you staying in His Word? Are you assembling yourself with the body who can encourage and lift you up? Because bad times come even when you're doing all three of those things. But when you've surrounded yourself with people who can care for you and pray for you, when you keep yourself within the will of God, those bad times get a little easier. The Word of God must have the highest level of importance in a dad's life. It is not something that is hypothetical or only invoked in some situations and not others. You know what that means? is We can't cherry pick God's Word. We can't find our favorite verse and no matter what spiritual conversation someone has, it's always funny we quote that same exact verse. And why is that? Because it's the only one we know or that we care to apply. We must have a true reverence of God and the way we do that is holding His Word at the highest level of importance. God's Word clearly tells us that those who walk in His ways are what? Blessed. How do we know His ways? By having a healthy fear of Him and by knowing His Word. And why is that important? Father, grandfather, uncle, big brother, so on? Because you were called to live a godly life. And that godly life allows you to demonstrate a life that's Christ-like. It allows you to be that living testimony in the ways of love, in the ways of conduct, and in the ways of wisdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 tells us this, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. You see, the world will look at verses like this one in 1 Corinthians. And it'll say, you know what? 
That is outdated. That is a terrible line of thinking. That is discriminatory against females. See, that's the redefinition of the roles of man and woman. Amen? That's skewing and manipulating and perverting the Word of God. God places no higher value, no higher value on a man than He does a woman. But each have clearly defined roles that are not more important than the other. Can I get an agreement with that? God has outlined a family structure that has worked since time immemorial. A clear definition of a traditional family. Only th since the world has, has tried to start redefining those roles have we seen such an accelerated rate of chaos in our society. Guys, we should be governing ourselves and actions based upon the Word of God and nothing else. Not based upon what's trendy this week. Not based upon what modern day doctors and psychologists would tell us. Nothing trumps the Word of God. Amen. We should be taking God seriously and never make the mistake. And here's the thing, guys. I want you to listen up. Whether you're a father in here or not, I hope you hear this portion. When you look at the makeup of a church, and I haven't done the numbers in here this morning... When you look at the makeup of a church, tradi traditionally, women make up the church. There is a majority of females that will be in worship services, in Bible studies, in prayer meetings. And that's, that's universal. We should be taking God seriously, men. We should never make the mistake of thinking that spirituality, prayer, the Bible, and worship are only for women and children to really be sold out for. If your home is not right, if it's in disarray, then as the man, it is your responsibility to get it in order. Can someone say amen? According to God's word, you are the head of your household and should act suitably. Not relish in the authority in which God has placed, but rather take it seriously and actually act accordingly. You do that by walking in His way. Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2 tells us this, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law. Of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. The second thing we need to do as men, and I think most everybody would agree with this, is that we need to provide for our families. Amen? Psalm 128, verse 2 says this For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Men, we should never be content with idleness. We should never be content with just being and not having purpose and not being intentional with our actions, with our minds. The role of the man is to supply for his family. But that does not mean the sole role of providing is to make sure that you can pay the rent or pay the mortgage. Amen? That does not mean that the man's sole role is to make sure that there is food on the table. That does not mean that it is just making sure that your wife and your children have clothes on their back. Because so many men fall short in their role as the head of the household by working endlessly to say, you know what, at least I provide for my family. Financially, amen and amen. Amen and amen. But... Happiness is not built on those materialistic things. Can I, can I get an amen? amen? Men, according to God's word, you are also the provider of physical, emotional, and spiritual security. See, that's the part you don't hear a lot of people talk about. Because when it comes to being the provider of the family, everybody automatically jumps to the money or the labor aspect. But you are actually supposed to be the provider of physical, emotional, 
and spiritual security within your home. Some of us, so many guys become lazy and think that if we're bringing home a paycheck, then we have met the expectation of being a provider. But that is not the case. Why? Because your family's well-being is placed under your care. This morning, I, I, when I started, I said we shouldn't be discouraged. We should be encouraged and emboldened by this message. We should be motivated. There should be some sense of urgency by what God is telling us. God has placed such a significant role on you as a father and as a man. Your family's well-being is placed under your care. And what does that mean? Well, what does that mean, it being under your care? Well, well think of a vehicle. Now, you don't have to be a mechanic. You don't have to be good with cars like Brother Max back there. But if there's something going on with your car, if, it, if it's wobbling back and forth and you're not doing it with the steering wheel going up the road, you know something's wrong. If it's making a noise in the engine, you know something is wrong. If, if, if it won't start, you know something is wrong. So most of us would take it to someone who can look at it and say, okay, this is the problem, this is how you fix it. Right? They would, they would be active, you would be proactive at trying to get that vehicle fixed. Well, as the provider in your family, you are to do the exact same thing for your family. And what I mean by that is, and here's my question for you, do you actively identify areas in your wife's spiritual life or your, your children's spiritual lives that need attention. Because I can guarantee you in all the houses that's represented here this morning, there are major spiritual and faith-based uh, struggles that are taking place. And are you actively looking for those? Are you actively going to God and praying and saying, God, help me. Just like that mechanic that can, that can point out what needs to be fixed and, and tell you how to remedy it, what parts to change. If you go to God and say, God, here is this issue, here is this problem I see. Just tell me what I can do. What can I do to try and help? God will give you answers, amen? And it is your job as the man, the head of the household, as the father... To be proactively looking for those things. To be actively trying to determine what is going on. Are there emotional struggles that your family has? As the head of the household, it is your job to pray for those things. To seek God's guidance on how to help in those areas. Verse 2 in Psalm 128 talks about fruitfulness, being fruitful. The godly man, the, the, the godly father, is to be in tune with his family. How many people have I talked to when I ask a simple question about what's going on in the lives of the people that they live with, sometimes they're completely oblivious to what's going on, what's taking place. They might be able to tell you an activity that their son or daughter is participating in, but they can't give you any details. And if you ask questions like, what do you think your wife's biggest spiritual struggle is right now? What, what, what's the last Bible study? What's, what's the last devotional that your wife has done? What, what, when's the last time that you gathered your family around and, and just spent time in God's Word? You want to get people to stop talking to you? Ask those types of questions, amen? They'll run away from you quick. Why? Because for most men, this is where we lack. This is where we just, we, we, we come up so short. Because we're great at being providers from a materialistic standpoint. But we have so much more room to grow when it comes to providing that spiritual, emotional, and physical security. The godly man and the godly father is to be in tune with his family. To understand and identify when there is a need. And that does not mean, understand this guys, it doesn't mean that you have to be Mr. Fix-It, amen? You're not Superman, and nobody's saying that, and God's Word definitely is not saying that. But what it means is that your family, if your family sees you and observes you 
living by faith. Living with dependence upon God and seeking the Lord's counsel. Then odds are, they will too. Amen? Because then it's not hypothetical. Then it's not just, oh yeah, Dad, he goes to church on Sundays. No, they see you actually exercising your faith. Guys, let me ask you this question. When's the last time that your wife or your child came to you with a problem or a struggle and the first thing you said is, you know what? Let's pray about it. Let's seek the Lord out in this right now. How powerful such a simple action can be when the first response you have as a man is not to, to get flustered, not to say, well, I'll take care of it. But say, you know what? Let's pray about this right now. Before we do anything else, let's go to the Lord. And for I, I can feel it now for a lot of people, oh no, your pride, your pride won't let you do that, right? Because you, you can fix anything. You're the man. You, you, can, you can do everything. Understand this. If you believe in an almighty and all-powerful God that created everything and brought everything into existence by simply speaking, then how could it hurt your pride to go to that being when there's a problem in your family? How easy should that be for us? By doing that, you show reverence to God. It shows that you know God is the only way to work through your difficult circumstance, your problem, your current concerns. The only way you can ever really provide and protect for your family is by relying completely on God. You show that reliance upon, you show that reliance upon Him by going to Him in prayer and seeking His counsel. Psalm 128. Verses 3 through 5, here's what God's Word tells us. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants round about my table, or thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion. And thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. The third thing we need to do, men, is we need to worship together. We need to worship as a family. Our homes will never worship as God intended if the head of the household does not worship. Amen? Guys, if you are not worshiping in your home, don't expect your wife and your children to do so. If you're not serious about prayer life and Bible study, don't expect your wife and your children to be. If you're not serious about coming to God's house, don't expect your wife and children to be. Guys, you need to be right with God. I need to be right with God if we have hope that our families will be. As a man, we should have the desire in our heart when it comes to our house, something that's, that's given to us in the book of Joshua. In Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, it says this, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwelt. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You see, that verse is quoted often, and people like that, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But how many of us actually do it? How many of us actually daily seek that in serving the Lord? The godly father, the, go the, the godly man makes a choice daily. Every day that you wake up, and this is men and women alike, every day we, we wake up, we have a choice whether or not we are going to follow Jesus. And it has to be an intentional choice. It has to be a thought-out choice. Not just, oh yeah, of course, I serve God. If I die today, yeah, I'll go to heaven. No, it means having your life be a living testimony. Actively exercising your faith. You can't expect your wife and children to live and serve God faithfully if you do not do the same. I can't stress that enough. A vine is very fruitful. That's what Psalm 128 tells us. 
But a vine, in order to reach its maximum potential, needs support. Amen? It needs something to lean upon. So your wife is, is like a vine by the side of the house and the olive trees. In this example, in Psalm 128, are your children. In the Middle East, you know, if you had, if you had olive trees, then you would have a, a source of productivity and, and a real source of wealth. That was something that was beneficial to you economically. Those olive trees, green, productive, beautiful, and stable. But they need to be cultivated. Do you understand what that means? They, they need to be cared for. And, and how do you cultivate, men, your olive trees? How do you do that? Well, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4 says this. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up and the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Dads, don't provoke your kids to anger. That's pretty, that's pretty clear cut. Don't use your authority over them to exercise your need to be in control. Provoking your kids to anger has damaging effects. Actually, in Coloss the book of Colossians, it expounds upon this verse, because in chapter 3, verse 21, it says, Fathers, Provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. I think it was Josh McDowell I, I heard say one time that rules without a relationship leads to rebellion. If we want to know why so many of our children leave the faith, if we want to know why so many children are struggling at home, at school, how, how good is your relationship? How good is my relationship with our children? Are we dads in name only? Are we that provider? Do we keep the roof over their head? Or are we active in their life? Unnecessary provocations leads to discouragement. That's what God's Word tells us. What father honestly wants their child to be discouraged? Now we're told... In God's word that we should nurture our children. But what does that mean exactly? That word from the that, that word nurture comes from the Greek word padia. And what that means is, is to train, instruct, and to discipline. That is what we are called. Paul here is advocating. He's advocating for us, or rather, he's advocating for us to train and instruct. But he's advocating for fathers to treat their children with kindness. To treat children as Jesus would have. What a challenge to us. Guys, our role in the homes, by the way, is to be the pastor or the shepherd of our homes. To lead and to teach. An unknown, uh, uh, an unknown source put it this way. They said this. The Father teaches kindness by being thoughtful and gracious, even at home. How often do we bring our struggles of the world and our, 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 our frustration with work home? It's very common for that to happen. He teaches patience by being gentle and understanding over and over. He teaches honesty by keeping His promises to His family, even when it costs. He teaches courage by living unafraid with faith in all circumstances. He teaches justice by being fair and dealing equally with everyone. He teaches obedience to God's Word by precept and example as He reads and prays daily with His family. He teaches love for God and His church as He takes His family regular or regularly, to all services. His steps are important because others follow. So often we become busy with other things that we neglect. We neglect our roles as men and as fathers. But busyness and neglect are so detrimental to your family, especially to your children. Or your grandchildren. I read the testimony of a young man named Brian. And 
Brian shared the, the fact that he was a, a Boy Scout and it was the first time and his, his Boy Scout troop had planned a, a father-son camp out. So he's all excited and he was thrilled and he could hardly wait to rush home and, and give his father all the information about this camp out. And he said the, the Friday came that the camp out was supposed to start and he had pulled out all the gear and had it out on the porch. He was ready to stuff the car full for the moment when his dad pulled in the driveway. They were supposed to meet at a, a local school at 5 o'clock to meet the rest of the Boy Scout troop to go for the weekend. But dad, he said his dad didn't get home until 7 p.m. from work. Now, he's frantic, but he explained how things had gone gone wrong at work and he was kept late and that he didn't intentionally mean to be late but not, not to worry don't worry about it because you know what we'll get up first thing in the morning and we'll join the others so about a half an hour before they were supposed to leave Brian gets up and he has everything loaded in the car and he was ready at 7 a.m. when his dad told him they would leave but his dad never came out of his room until about 9 a.m. And when his dad came out, he saw him standing there with all the camping gear in the car. And he finally explained, you know what, son, I, I'm sorry. I didn't know how to tell you this, but I have a bad back and I just can't go camping. I can't lay on the ground. So Brian Crush, he starts unloading the little pop-up tent he had and his little camp stove and the other things. And he takes it around. To the, to the side of a shed, and he starts loading it in the shed, and his tears are streaming down his face. His dad thought he was out of sight or thought that he had gone somewhere else. And he watched his dad, with his golf clubs in tow, load it into the trunk and pull it off. And he asked, Daddy, where are you going? He said, well, I have commitments today. And he pulled off. And in that moment, what he said, Brian, that is, he said that that's when he realized his dad never meant to go with him to the camp out because he didn't matter to him. That his golfing buddies were more important. Those commitments were more important than time with his son. Now dads, I don't say this for a sad story and to try to make you feel bad. Once again, as we go through God's word, we should be emboldened and motivated to strive to be better. But most of the time, our, our, our children, our wives, our families, what they ultimately want from us is our time to show a little interest, to actively participate, participate, to show them we're proud of them and their achievements, to let them know that we care. We need to be there for them when they need us. We need to worship God as a family. Lifeway Research put out this study. It said that if the father attends church regularly, then not, there's a 93% chance that his family will follow. According to Theology for the People, another study focused on Sunday school. And by the way, guys, I'm preaching to myself on this one. The focus was on Sunday school and found similar results on the impact of the fathers. They said when both parents attended Bible study or in addition to Sunday service, 72% of their children attend Sunday school when they're grown. When only the father attends Sunday school, 55% of the children attend when grown. When only the mother attends Sunday school, 15% of the children attend when grown. Now, I'm not trying to belittle the influence of the mother on the home, spiritually speaking. But the numbers don't lie that men... Fathers have a tremendous impact on the spiritual life of your children. By the way, when neither parent attends Sunday school, only 6% of the children will attend when they're grown. Dad, you have a tremendous impact on your family's spiritual growth. Studies confirm, uh, statistics prove it, but you know what? God's Word tells us by its instruction. Psalm 128 verse 6 is this. Thou shalt see thy children's children and peace be upon Israel. What is God's promise for those who walk in His ways, who work to provide 
and who worship together, we read that there will be peace. That word peace comes from the Hebrew word shalom, which is probably the most recognizable or, 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 or most famous of Hebrew words. The Hebrew translation of shalom means this. It means completeness. It means wholeness, well-being, welfare, and peace. It is derived from the root that means to be complete or to be sound. When shalom shalom is, is translated as peace, as it is in our text this morning, this peace is more than a mere absence of strife or conflict. It describes peace that is positive a time, a a place and condition that features love, righteousness, calmness, and moral uprightness, and much more. Understand this, our homes will have love, righteousness, and calmness if we follow the outline set out for us in Psalm 128. So dads, this morning, here's what I would say to you. If you feel like you have room to grow as a father, I know I do, then I invite you to seek God's word. Seek God's counsel. Pray to Him. Wives, mothers, if you're in here this morning and you you desire to have a peaceful household, if if you're thankful for the role of man and woman, if, if you're thankful for your husband as a husband and a father, then I ask you, lift up your thanks to the Lord. And then this morning, there are some of us, as we celebrate fathers, there are some of us who no longer have our dads. There are some of us who no longer have husbands. And I would like to tell you that it's very easy To just seek the Lord and and it'll all turn out okay. But I'm going to tell you that there's nothing that will replace the desire to want to reach out to that person. My dad went to be with the Lord nearly nine years ago. And I still find myself thinking, you know what, I wonder what dad would say about this. Even going as far as to pick up the phone and realizing, you know what... I'm probably going to get a weird, a weird conversation if I call and ask the question to the person that I dial. You can't replace that person in your life. But what you can do is you can go before the Lord and pray for peace. And pray that He will, that he will give you that relief and that comfort that the role of that man, the role of your father, the role of your husband was designed to give. Because understand this, as human beings, men will fall short, fathers will fall short, husbands will fall short, but you know who never does? Our Heavenly Father. Amen? Church, as the bride of Christ, there is a husbandman that will never fall short. And that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning, I hope you're thankful for the men in your life. And I hope you're thankful most of all for our Lord Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? Father God, thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. I'm thankful for those who've come out to worship you. Father, I am thankful for the dads that are in the house. Father, I pray that you encourage them, that you lift them up, that you speak to them in a mighty way. Father, I pray that if there are areas in our lives where we can grow, that we seek you out to show us how we can grow. Father, I pray that if we're thankful this morning, most of all for you, but also for our earthly fathers, I pray we lift those thanks and those praises up to you this morning. And Father, I pray that if there's anyone in here that is struggling with the loss of their dad, that they put their dependence on you, that they seek you out for peace in their lives and in their homes. Father, I just praise you for all the blessings you give me. Father, you are worthy of every bit of reverence that I am capable to give. Father, just be with us here this morning. And it's in Jesus' name I pray all of these things. Amen.